from Querétaro, Mexico. So, I'm in the car by myself because when it comes to breakups, there is a lot of stuff that tends to come to the surface and different types of struggles that come out. And one of those for me has been, it's been weirdly difficult for me to do things on my own. Uh, do errands, go out by myself, not be around friends, and today I'm going to force myself to have a completely solo day and see how it goes. It's probably not as intimidating as I think it is, but it does feel that way right now. <laughs> So my first stop is getting breakfast at this place called La Oja Cafe and I already got a cappuccino with all this amazing foam. This is my favorite part of any cappuccino. And I am anxiously awaiting my breakfast because it's already 10.45 and I haven't eaten anything. With how much we've been going to the gym lately, I'm starving. <laughs> my body needs fuel. I decided to get this plate called Cacheteados, I think it is. I'm sure that means something, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> it looks really good though. It has avocado, over easy eggs, and then a tamal underneath, a cheese tamal. All right, let's try it out. Oh, the green sauce is good. Mmm. Mmm. So this plate was 155 pesos. And the cappuccino, I believe, was 65 pesos. Yep, 65 pesos. So it's not a cheap restaurant, but it's a really great ambiance. I'm out here at like a gardenish area, and there's also an inside too, which is very like vintage, old time decorations and stuff. And this place is huge, the parking lot is huge, but it seems like always busy. This is a Wednesday morning, and the parking lot was basically entirely full. I barely was able to find a spot. Gracias. Gracias. There is so much foam on this cappuccino. I haven't even gotten to the coffee yet. <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. Yum. <laughs> Well, that was a very tasty way to start my day. And now I'm going to try to make this eight minute drive in this very confusing highway area to the next stop. As Jordan and I have mentioned on our channel before, Querétaro is a much easier city to drive in than some others in Mexico, but boy do I miss driving in the US sometimes, just like the simplicity of it, you really don't have to think, construction stuff is well labeled, you don't have to always be on guard for people doing weird maneuvers or um, big potholes or unmarked speed bumps and stuff. Yeah, it, it, that does make me miss the US and it always feels like whenever I go back it's like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. You don't have to think about anything. <laughs> the lanes are wide and everything's well marked. Yeah. Sigh. <laughs> We have arrived! So I am now in what's called Mercado de las Flores and this place is not just flowers, it has everything. So many pretty plants down so many different aisles. Hola! <laughs> and they've got pots and different structures that you can buy so I'm going to try to get a few things for my apartment. problem is it's kind of overwhelming because there's so many choices and I want to get all of it so we're just gonna see how it goes. Okay so here's some of the pots I have. Super colorful, lots of different shapes and sizes. The last time I was here I was having, having trouble with deciding do I get a pot first or do I get a plant first because you want them to fit each other and I ended up going with the plant first and I think I'm gonna try to do the same thing today. Oh my gosh look at all these. How pretty. Hola, buenos días. ¿Cuánto cuestan estas aquí? Estas se llaman mala madre, 40 pesos. 50? 40. Oh, 40. Okay, gracias. Okay. 
Okay, voy a comprar uno. Sí. Okay, I picked up my first plant for 40 pesos and now I have to find a pot. I'm looking at these. I don't know what color to get, shape, size. No, maybe I know the size. <laughs> Okay, I've got the full set and this actually has a plate connected to it. A lot of times they're not included in the price and she did 130 pesos. Yay! Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it is very difficult to be in there looking for a plant, holding a plant, trying to find a pot, looking for a place to set this camera. It does help to have an extra set of hands. So I think I'm actually gonna put this away until I find my plant haul and I'll see you back in, I don't know how long, maybe a few hours, maybe 15 minutes, we'll see. This is my newest plant baby. So this plate and the pot was 300. He gave me a little bit of a deal. And this beautiful uh, lush, well, beautiful full palm was 80 pesos. So this was totally a steal. That's, that's actually the thing in there is that the plants are really cheap and the pots and the plates that you put under them are so expensive. It's like, I could get a thousand plants, but the pots is where it's gonna kill me. Perfectly executed. I thought it was really cool while I was in there and I was like looking for some pots and I had one of my plants that I was trying to fit into them. These two ladies came up and they were asking me where I got the little baby palm and what was it called and we were just having this whole conversation all in Spanish and at the end they were like, hablas bien español. And so it's always kind of cool to get those compliments because sometimes I think I'm totally butchering it or I can't find my words or I don't know how to conjugate verbs or something. But in reality, I've made a ton of progress and I can have full on conversations in Spanish where people actually compliment me at the end. So I I'm really thankful that I was doing lessons before coming to Mexico and continue to do lessons here. The program that I've been using for a very long time is called Rocket Languages and I love it because it's all inclusive. It's got audio lessons, uh, so you get comfortable speaking out loud. It's got visual stuff like your typical flashcards and then looking at sentences where they're translated and just a ton of stuff, even history and culture lessons. So if you want to learn Spanish, I highly recommend it and you can start a free trial of Rocket Spanish by going to tangerinespanish.com that's our affiliate link and it will forward you right there. You can even start a, a trial and you don't have to give a credit card or anything. So if you want to start learning and check that out, go to tangerinespanish.com. I've got two more plant babies to add to my collection in this beautiful like pinky peach pot and this little palmita was 35 pesos. Then, I don't know what you call this, but I love that it matches this also peachy pink pot. And this plant was 50 pesos. And then once again, the two pots with their plates were 500 pesos, which is like so disproportionately a lot compared to how much you pay for the plants. So I'm like, ugh, maybe I should learn to make my own pots or something. And now I just need to get all my little plant babies home safe and hopefully they're not traumatized too much by toe paste or bumps in the road. <laughs> I actually did really want to get some more plants in there. Like there's a ton of really cute tiny succulents that were like five to 50 pesos each for pretty decent sized ones that looked really healthy, but I'm kind of worried about leaving all of this, all of these plants in the car for too long because even though it's not that hot, hot outside, maybe like it says 75 degrees on my car, the inside feels way hotter than that. And I don't know if I should spend any more money on this today. This is like becoming an addiction already. <laughs> well, my three little babies made it, but this guy fell over. There's now dirt everywhere no so two of my little plantitas are gonna make their home here i think they look so good i love these two colors together and then another little plantita has its home right here looks very happy there 
So it's actually uncharacteristically windy in Querétaro today, so I kind of want to take a little break inside because I feel super windblown. And I was gonna show you this project that I'm working on. I just started this yesterday. So when I was younger, in my teens or so, I used to crochet and I kind of wanted to pick up that hobby again. So I got this, this yarn. Well, if you follow me on Instagram, at Tangerine Maddie, you probably already saw my story about this, but I found this yarn that's made out of 100% recycled materials. Yeah, it says 90% high quality recycled cotton and 10% other recycled fibers. It's called Hooked Z Sp Spaghetti, Spaghetti. <laughs> and it's like super soft. It feels like jersey t-shirt material almost. So I was gonna go for a queen sized quilt and I already have here like I don't know, maybe seven to 10 rows, but I laid it all out last night and it was like, oh my gosh, this is just, it's way too wide and I've almost gone through an entire like spool or what do you call it, like a whole thingy of yarn. Um, and those are about 200 pesos each, so I think it would be way too expensive of a blanket. So um, as sad as it is, or as cringy as it is, I think I'm actually gonna, pull it all out and start over and make something a little bit smaller. Yeah, so just to give you an idea of the size, this folds out to be a king size bed here. I had to measure out of curiosity and it is in fact about nine feet long. <laughs> I don't know where I was getting my measurements, but I swear it said that this was queen size. Is that really how big queen size blankets are? And it's gonna have, let me show you gonna have this color here and then these three colors here and I think it's gonna be very soft and perfect timing for the weather to be cooling off here in Querétaro. Okay, bye bye blanket. <laughs> back to my single stitch that I first started with, but I actually think I'm going to take the entire thing out because when I first started, I was still getting the hang of this yarn. It's much different than your typical yarn, so not all the loops were even, and they've kind of been stretched out by crocheting into them. So we are just going to start from scratch. I must say, if it didn't look like spaghetti before, <laughs> it certainly looks like it now. <laughs> so with this yarn, the store that I went to recommended that I use a 12 millimeter, which is officially the biggest hook I've ever used, but they said if I used any smaller, then it would be too tight and too rigid. So we're gonna start here with a single stitch. And I'm probably gonna do about, <laughs> I don't know, five and a half feet instead of nine this time. So here's what this looks like. And you know, honestly, I don't know how interesting or boring this is. So if you wanna see some more stuff like this, me crafting, doing sewing projects and other things like that, let me know in the comments because we've never really included anything like this on our channel. And therefore, I don't really know, like this could be the most boring part of the video ever. I really don't know. Hopefully it's not though. When I originally bought that yarn, I was quite sure that those four rolls would be completely sufficient, but it turns out probably not even close, so. <laughs> I've brought about four little, not about, I've brought four of these little colors to see if I can find some more at the store called Crochet. Okay. Uh oh. Hola, buenas tardes. Uh, busco más de estos colores y no puedo encontrarlos allí. Hay más o quizás hay atrás. The nice lady helped me find these three colors out of the four, so that's great. And I will still be able to make a blanket, I think, if I rotate those three, or I could put the bright pink in the middle. But oh my gosh, I love this store. It is yarn paradise. Like anything you could possibly think of, any type, like super fuzzy or like really colorful. So soft. And they've even got these super, super big rolls that I think it says you can make an entire blanket with just one. It's so soft and fuzzy. I'm gonna have to come back and get way more. 
All right, so I got my three spools, spools, rolls, I don't know what you call these, of yarn and also a flexible measuring tape because I think that's gonna be way easier than using a giant like tool belt <laughs> uh, measuring tape. And it was all about 600 pesos, so not too bad. And hopefully this will complete the blanket. The other great thing about going to that yarn place is that right upstairs, because this is in like a little plaza with some restaurants and other stores and little, um, yeah, little shops and stuff, there's a sushi place, which is very highly rated on Google Maps and gave it a try a week or two ago because we have not had any luck finding good sushi in Queretaro. It's all like all rice and all cream cheese and like tiny, tiny pieces of not very good meat but this place on the other hand is very good so two birds with one stone gotta do it starting off a little bit of house stocky and it's not too bad the price 95 pesos and I think this is about three of these little guys so today has not been all that bad by myself I was intimidated at the beginning but it's been a lot of fun and I feel like I should get out there and do this more often instead of hiding out at home it does make me wonder though, should I move back to the US? After our breakup video and my first solo video where I was kind of opening up about how I'm doing after the breakup, lots and lots of people fell into two categories of things they were saying. One was I should go back to the US because that would give me my support system of my family and my friends back home, familiar culture and everything. And the other subset of people said that I should move back to the US because it's just not safe in Mexico for single females. And I don't really agree with that as a whole, and especially here in Querétaro, it's a very, very safe. Um, I feel like no problem at all walking around, even if it was at night, I don't think I'd have a big deal with it. So I don't know what the answer is to that. If I should go back to the US and be around family, I would certainly love to go back for a visit, but I do have health concerns, given that the food causes me so many issues back in the US for whatever reason. We've talked about this in videos before, and I think we're gonna go into more detail about this in next week's video. But that's kind of where I'm at. Should I? Should I not? Should I stay in Querétaro? I certainly do want to, but like many people would probably agree, after a breakup, your head is all discombobulated. I don't really know the answer to a lot of things. Up is down, left is right, that type of thing. I I'm working my way through it. I decided to get a caterpillar roll, which was 187 pesos. <laughs> and a Philadelphia roll, which is 115 pesos. Definitely not the cheapest sushi I've ever seen in Mexico, but I do think it's pretty good. It still has a decent amount of cream cheese, but here I think it's different a little bit because it's like whipped or something, so it doesn't feel like a just hunk of cheap cream cheese. Um, I really like it, and this might be my new favorite sushi place in Querétaro. <laughs> I think I almost forgot to mention the sushi place is called Sushi 7. <laughs> On the screen here is a playlist of all the videos that we've made in Querétaro up to this point so you can continue watching until we see you again next Saturday. Please subscribe to our channel before you go and one more thing. Gong that bell so you get notified the next time we release a new video and we'll see you on Saturday morning.